Hello friend, how is it going? Welcome back to Toyota Maintenance YouTube channel. I got today older customer bringing new vehicle to me. She had different brand before and she finally bought Toyota. I know you guys love on this channel, this generation of foreigners. She does. She was searching for this one for a while. It's a limited V6 four wheel drive. It's a beauty. Let me show you the engine. As I said, new to me. We just spent almost hour talking life and her new vehicle. She owned it for a while. She did timing belt. It's all serviced. Unfortunately, valve cover, which is Chinese because it was damaged. There is a Chinese valve cover. I never saw that. The other one is Japanese OEM. This one is a Chinese. She said she had it changed two years ago. Well, look at that big valve cover gasket leak. So that's unfortunate. But yet it's still not dripping on that exhaust manifold. So that's fine. She has problem with brakes. It seems to be that the brake booster is bad. And that was the reason she came. But apparently just the other day, the check engine light went on. And she actually went and visited O'Reilly. Not sure if you guys, subscribers, if you are aware of it, that you don't have to have your own scanner. You can go to O'Reilly. They will grab their own scanner and they will go hook it to your vehicle and scan for the codes. Sure enough, apparently she had two codes. It's interesting. She even got a printouts from them. I put these two papers right here side by side. So this is what you get from O'Reilly all for free. Shocking, huh? So it shows the 1997 Forerunner and she has a two codes. Let's start with P0130, which is O2 sensor bank one sensor one. And she has a P0133 O2 sensor circuit slow response bank one sensor one. Reading those papers, the owner decided, hmm, I will logically, it logically makes sense that that B1 S1 sensor should be bad and should be replaced. So she basically saved diagnostic fee. Of course, it still could be something else, but most likely it will be the sensor itself. It makes sense, right? Did we mention the mileage? Let me show you the mileage, which is high on it. What is it on it? It's uh, 266,000 miles on the odometer of this vehicle. So she kind of decided she will just pay me to replace the sensor. And I kind of agree with her. So as you know, I always choose the Denso's. If there is a chance, if it's available, I will always use Denso, use Denso over anything else. One of the decision factors for her was that the O'Reilly even gets you a chart there is a number, a statistic number, basically, right? Uh, which is being shared with people, other people, what fixed that problem. So if you have that P0133, she made some notes here, so I'm not showing it. But uh, oxygen sensor, it says 2,529 cases. It fixed it instead of 138 for maybe PCV valve. Or here you can see it, right? Oxygen sensor, 428 cases where, yeah, that's what fixed the problem. Only 27 times it was PCV valve or the connector was bad in three cases. So I just want to share this with you. This is pretty interesting. Obviously, that's less money for me, but I'm proud of her. And I believe at the end, her gut feeling is correct that just replacing that sensor for 100 bucks 
Right? They, they are not so expensive in her case. They vary between 100 and 200 dollars. Of course, to confirm it for myself, I uh, got out my quick uh, simple scanner to just quickly confirm it. And I hope you can see it without any glare. You can see that it's correct. There are. This is the first of two codes, P0130, right? And if I go, I look on the other one, it's P0133. So this is confirmed. They did a good job at O'Reilly. And let's see if her gut feeling about following this will be correct or there will be another problem. I think it's really important to say that I'm not being paid by O'Reilly to show you all of this. It's just another day at my shop and this is something I wanted to share with you. Here I'm sure you will like how easy it is to get to the AF sensor, the B1S1. How do we know what is what? Here is catalytic converter. That's an exhaust pipe. The sensor which you see right here and I sprayed it already with my penetrating lubricant to make sure the removal will be easy. The one before a catalytic converter, which as you can see even the wiring harness, everything is relatively easy to get to it. That's a B1S1, bang one hand sensor one. It can be called by Toyota standards AF sensor or air fuel sensor, right? It's measuring that. Or somebody can call it upstream because if this is like a river, the gas, um, the gas is exhaust gas, it's are leaving away, right? Obviously upstream of catalytic converter and there has to be downstream and sure enough, look at it. This will be a B1S2 or in the Toyota language, this will be oxygen sensor. Despite the fact sometimes people call oxygen sensor the upstream, no, don't do it. I will say this is AF and this is oxygen. So we are dealing with this one. You see the electric connector, it's right here, easy to unclip. I pre looped, pre sprayed the nuts. Everything seems to be nice despite the age and mileage of this vehicle. I actually see a lot of great maintenance. Look, for example, here, this a fuel filter it's OEM Toyota so this is amazing high miles doesn't necessarily mean bad vehicle this one seems to be uh, managed and uh, maintained properly even the bolts on this skid plate were almost brand new so somebody was putting a bunch of money in this one but let's go back to our AF sensor hopefully I can easily remove it here you can see in the place 12 millimeter range. It was very easy. I'm very lucky. As I said, they were very easy to crack loose. So I will continue. There is not space for me and you. So I will remove it without you. Unhook it. Show it to you. We will put the new one and then we will see the results. But you get the picture. This is pretty easy for anybody to do themselves. So you can see them nicely side by side. Old I have just removed and the new one. You can see all the four wires, two black, blue and white. That means it's a heated oxygen sensor. It's the dent so gives you direct fit. You will be not modifying the connector. Just always compare them just to be sure before you will install it. Sometimes in this box it's also a very small pouch of the anti-seize. This one didn't have it. It's highly advised on these studs in that exhaust. Put a little bit of anti-seize so that nut, that 12 millimeter nuts, both of them will be easy to be removed in the future if there is a need for that. So let's see what we get after replacing AFB1S1. Put the ignition on. The link to the vehicle. The code should be still there. Because I didn't erase them, right? So we will use the 
eraser. Erase was successful, press DTC. There will be nothing obviously, the engine is not even running. Now we can start it up. The light should be gone. We have a brand new engine oil. The idle, now there is a new sensor. The computer is getting data from completely different sensors, so it's absolutely normal that you observe 1300 RPM idle. We have nothing currently coming. The monitors are flashing because we were erasing the code, so basically we are starting from a scratch. I can refresh it with this, but you will see there will be nothing, right? But nothing is pending, let's let's put it this way. Nothing is stored and nothing is pending. Of course this code not necessarily will trigger itself in 5-10 seconds, but I can tell you confidently that this problem 99.9% is taken care of and it was correct diagnose. I will let it idle for a while so the computer can relearn that new situation which you can see it's doing. We started or 1300, we are already down to 1100. Everything is going good so I will do that. Let it idle when the customer who's waiting, she's walking around and she will come back that the idle is already good and she's happy with it and um, I will actually, you will see it later because we will be fixing that brake problem which I mentioned hopefully, yeah, we will be fixing it in two days so if you like the video give it a thumb up please and be subscribed because I will try to film that brake problem for you, the number one diagnosis and then the replacement of the faulty part. Thank you for watching, supporting this channel and have a great day my friend.